Okay, moin. Uh, this video is part of the scientific uh, Python programming course at the University of Bremen. And in this uh, session, we would like to treat uh, the so-called API documentation. So basically, we would like to make sure that if we are writing modules, other people can use uh, our module, reuse our module, and we would like to create documentation which they can extract easily and look at. Uh, so basically that they can use our module instead of having to look in the source code itself. So that's basically the purpose uh, of this video of today. As always, we are working in our uh, uh, Ubuntu uh, virtual environment, right? And you can just download the slides from the usual place. This is uh, part of slides uh, eight, uh, exception that API documentation, the URL you see here, that's the usual one. And basically this is the second part of the, uh, of the slide set which has to do with the API documentation. Uh, basically what you have to do if you want to uh, execute uh, or with me what I'm doing you have to ex uh, you want to execute you you have to use Python uh, or uh, install uh, farther uh, Python packages especially the Python free Sphinx package and the make package and if you want to able also to do uh, the LaTeX or and PDF exercise uh, at the end you should also install those packages. The reason why I put it uh, separately because those LaTeX, I mean Tech Live, the LaTeX distribution is quite huge. So that would take a while until you install it. But otherwise, uh, it's uh, maybe quite good if you have also LaTeX on your virtual machine in order to create documentation in PDF or even uh, in order to use LaTeX uh, for yourself. So please install those packages. I have installed them already on my, uh, uh, my virtual machine. So basically, this is, uh, you can do it in the meantime. So basically, just coming back to this API documentation, why do we need it? We need it because we would like our modules to talk to other modules, or we would like programs to use our modules. And then the question is always, that's fine, but who can uh, the program know what kind of routines are in the module? And of course, I mean, if you're talking about solvers.py, this is our main module so far. Um, I mean, it, it contains maybe a Gaussian eliminate routine. That's fine. And it's also nicely documented here, actually. So it's uh, we already made uh, some kind of effort to, to document it properly. And then here we have another function. Apparently, it starts with an underscore. So this means, you know, the convention is if you start a function with underscore and it's non-public, which means people are not supposed to access directly that function. We nevertheless documented it, so it's uh, it's not that bad. But uh, probably this this documentation, which the people should not look at because we are not supposed, uh, other people are not supposed to use that function. So it's on the helper function from uh, for this function. And also we are just introduced an, uh, in the previous uh, video session, which is introduced was an exceptions or a self-defined exception. Now, if I wanted to use the solvers package, which we, for example, do in test solvers, but we would also do in other program environments where we need a, a solver, then of course we have to we have to access them. So we have to know that uh, the class which is defined here, the error class, is the called linear error, or we have to know that the routine in order to solve the linear system of equation is called Gaussian eliminate. And the big question is, okay, who can I know that? And of course, I can also know that to, uh, by looking into the code. But if you think about all the modules which you are using yourself, like NumPy, it would be it would be a mess if you would have to look into the documentation. Of, I mean, into the source of NumPy every time you wanted to know what is what is in there and how you can call it. And therefore, we are we are looking for a system where we can ex uh, extract exactly that kind of documentation which is here, which is meant to be av available publicly if somebody wants to use uh, this uh, this uh, routine here, this function here, or if you are talking about the module. Here we have the doc string for the module. It would be good if you could somehow extract it and, for example, put on the website so people can have a look at that. Like you find the NumPy documentation on the website, and then people uh, can uh, basically know in order uh, without uh, looking in the source code how to use our module. And this is exactly what we want to demonstrate today. And of course, we would like to we would like to make this extraction of that documentation automatically as automatically as possible. And we will use for that the so-called Sphinx documentation system. Sphinx documentation system is something which was uh, which is very much interconnected with Python. So basically, all the Python documentation on the various websites on Python's website is made by Sphinx, or uh, also the NumPy documentation is made in the Sphinx system. So basically, uh, most Python projects are using that kind of uh, document uh, document generation, and it uh, and it uses the so-called restructured text format. So this is a special 
text format, which is basically tries to mimic uh, some constructs which we often use, like chapters, uh, like uh, um, bold characters, like italic characters, or uh, bullet lists, or enumerated lists. And but they do it in a way uh, which looks that normal text. So basically, in contrast to writing HTML or something similar, by writing some. Uh, uh, cryptic uh, control sequences or tags you just basically write normal text so basically if you look at that with a normal editor without create uh, without uh, converting it to something more complicated like an HTML you can just look at the source code and see immediately what is meant so it's basically a nice way of writing uh, some constructs in normal text and we could actually already try it here uh, so let's uh, just go to the uh, to the project to our um, here mm -hmm. I will just stop the server this is uh, here there from the previous session so let's just go into the lin server project where we are working now and uh, let's uh, just make, create a directory which we call docs okay uh, and this directory already exists uh, apparently uh, so it's already something there so I will just delete it so that we can create it again it's the remaining uh, thing from the previous uh, some previous uh, try and errors of mine. So now basically we are just creating here a docs. Okay, now let's go to this docs folder. And uh, in order to start something which is documented by Sphinx, we have to use, as uh, shown on the slides here, we have to use uh, the Sphinx quick start command, which would basically set up a Sphinx project. So let's uh, write Sphinx uh, quick start. And uh, basically, you can choose, uh, hit basically always enter for all uh, the options here, apart of a few ones. The project name uh, you have uh, to enter, uh, which is a Lin Solver documentation. So that would be the documentation of Lin Solver project. Okay, we can enter our author name if it's asked project version. Here you have to enter something, you can change it later. Let's call it 0.1. The language, of course, will be English. The suffix RST index is fine. The EPUB builder, we don't need. Uh, here it asks something autodoc, which means automatically insert doc strings from modules. And this is exactly what we wish to do. We would like to extract the doc strings from our module and insert into the document. So here you should make sure to make a yes. Uh, everything else you can say now to do entries now documentation coverage for the moment now what would be uh, also quite cool if you format math jacks which can help you to render equations in case you need it maybe it's it's worth to include it uh, so let's say yes you can later all change those things if you wish but uh, this just sets up the beginning otherwise you can just hit enter 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 okay now, if you hit uh, have that this, then you see that in uh, this uh, here, this um, directory is not empty anymore. You have a um, index.rst. This rst is the restructured text format, so this will be basically the opening document, uh, opening page of your documentation. You have a make file in the make.bat. At the moment, you shouldn't care much about that. Uh, we will use this make file, which contains information how to build the documentation. However, we, we don't have to know it. We will just just use it blindly. Later, if you if you have to deal with some compiled languages under uh, Unix, for example, then you will have to deal also with make files. And uh, make.path is just a Windows equivalent. And there is also one thing which is there is the conf.p is basically which is there some some configuration. Now I will just uh, just open it here. Let's open conf.p. And if you look at that, you see I will just hide the project explorer that we have a little bit more space here to see it. So basically, this is a normal Python file which will serve here for us uh, as the uh, here as the configuration file. And uh, basically, you see here, uh, for example, the extensions. That's 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 an important one. Here, uh, the autodoc we were enabling and Matiax we were en enabling, and you see that this was nothing else, just basically here a Python list uh, which was set uh, to the value, uh, to the list which contains the except uh, here the extensions. And I would like to add one more extension for us because it enables to extract the documentation exactly in the same format as we have, and this is called uh, Sphinx.x.napoleon. Don't ask me why this extension is called Napoleon, but uh, basically these exceptions enable us 
to extract the doc string documentation from the format which we use from the beginning so basically the, the format which is uh, suggested by the Google style guide so that we will uh, we will need but before we are extracting that information I just would like to set up an absolutely trivial uh, document so that, so we see how the building process and how this uh, how the RST format uh, looks like so basically let's go uh, back here uh, let's uh, show the uh, project explorer again so here we just uh, pane and then uh, here the project explorer we just click on that then you see the project explorer again and let's uh, open the index file and the index file looks somewhat cryptic at the beginning maybe uh, you, we see here dot dot and some text which is here also made uh, gray which means it's a comment then here you have a title and then you see here the underscores and this the underscores it's basically a marker which means whatever is above that it's a chapter header for example so and basically the only rule is that uh, this mark should be so long as the header itself and then it's it's contained as a chapter header or for example here in this table it will be also a chapter and uh, let's uh, let's just basically here you have the um, let's say the um, table of content and here if you want you can add additional file which contains some information and then those file will be included and they will serve also as chapters so i will just uh, make a file test.rst and uh, here uh, here basically the only thing you have to take care that is in the same column as everything else Unfortunately, this, this restructured text format is uh, like Python, indentation sensitive, so you, you should make sure that you are doing the indentation correctly. Here, the indentation is such that you have to indent uh, with, with that column, which would mean an indentation of three characters. Okay, so I, I say I'm telling it to also include a file test.rst and show the content of test.rst, and therefore I will now create a new file, which I will call test.rst and then uh, i will basically just uh, opening the content of test.rst in this conf.p i will just uh, store and then we don't need it for the moment and let's go to uh, this also we don't need let's go to test.rst and just make some things for example i can just make a, a big chapter uh, let's say i say test chapter and depending what i'm using as a um, as a marker i can for example make it this way so basically underscore it or or the usual convention actually is that if it's a if it's a chapter then you are using stars above and below so basically that would be uh, one uh, one way of marking things and then it would be a chapter and then we could just add uh, some we could just add some text here and also a list Let's say, and we say that the list, uh, the normal list would be item one, then I would say item two, and then item. So that would be, for example, a list. And then uh, here, continue the text. And for example, we could add some source code snippets so basically demonstrating some kind of source code please note here a double dot dot which means that no a source code coming and then you have to indent the source code and for example print is just the python command print hello world and this would be shown in the text in a different way so that the user can recognize that it's a snippet and here's some more text and maybe we could also add uh, an enumerated list enumerated list and that would be I also have shown in the slides an example here if you look at that an enumerated list would be just basically you can just write the numbers okay so basically you would say point one first point point two second point and so on right so this is a very very simple thing which I wrote here but uh, basically this is knowing that file test.rst and this test.rst is included in, uh, in index.rst and basically whatever you want to include into your documentation must be included in uh, uh, index.rst or in one of the documents which is included in index.rst so this is index.rst is the entry point to, for your documentation whatever is not included here will be not part of your documentation 
Now we have created something, so let's have a look. Uh, how can I create the documentation? I will just say make HTML. Make is basically a tool uh, which is there, uh, and this tool is basically uh, able to decide what to do depending on the date of some files, so when uh, which file is older than which one, and the information what it has to do is stored in this make file. We won't have a look at. We will not look into the inside. The important thing is that if you want to make an HTML documentation, then you have to invoke make with the parameter HTML. And in this make file, there is some information what to do if the parameter HTML has been passed to make. Okay, and make will understand that. But we just want to start it. And apparently there was no uh, any um, error messages. So basically here it was uh, created. Uh, many things were created and basically that's the important thing which is there. It says the build has been a bit succeeded, of course, and it says the build finished and the HTML pages are in build.html. And indeed, if you make an ls, then you see that there is a new folder has been created here, which is underscore build and in this underscore build folder, you have uh, an HTML subfolder and this HTML subfolder you have uh, here uh, some HTML files, and of course the most important is the opening file index.html. And let's have a look at that. We will just add Firefox and then uh, build uh, HTML index.hps uh, this uh, file to it. And um, if we do that, then Firefox starts and open that file, and you see that here. Uh, we have the string welcome to linsolvers documentations documentation this may be not optimal we can change that but if you look uh, here this is exactly that line here then we have here the table of content if you look uh, here in the uh, in the original file uh, you see that here i have the contents table of contents at the moment it has only one entry because only one file is included and in this file i have the test chapter and if you look at the test chapter, you see that I have some test uh, text here. Then I have this uh, bulleted list. Then I have here the source code very nicely indented and uh, even uh, the monospace printed and also with the text uh, with the box around it. So it's very nicely marked as a different block and so on and so on. And here I have an enumerated list. So basically, there are very simple constructs which we can do. And with that simple construct, you can even make tables and then basically translate it to a nice HTML. Actually, you cannot just build HTML out of that, although that's maybe the, the, the most useful one, uh, but you could also create a PDF documentation and that uh, would work by just making a LaTeX and PDF. Uh, so in order for this command to work, you would have to install the LaTeX uh, uh, um, packages as I have shown at the beginning. And uh, basically here it says uh, it was creating a linsolver documentation.pdf and apparently this is in uh, linsolver docs build latte and that we can, for example, with Evans have a look at that and if we look at uh, build latte and here we have linsolver documentation.pdf and if you look at that, basically you have something similar than the, the website, the HTML before but now you have it, it's in a PDF document. So basically this RST format is very nice because you can create PDFs as well as HTML. So basically if you want to, some, somebody wants to download the entire documentation uh, was one document, uh, it can download the generated PDF, otherwise it can download the generated HTML. Also this RST is very nice because there are some websites we can, which can automatically publish your documentation. Uh, if you host your repository, Git repository publicly, for example, on GitHub, uh, then, for example, readthedocs.org, uh, you can basically set up that it's whenever you check in something, it takes a documentation and makes a PDF and an HTML and renders that and shows uh, shows in a public website. So this format is RST format and swings. It's it's uh, quite uh, handy and many many people are using that. Okay. But now the original purpose of this uh, exercise was actually not uh, necessarily to write a documentation ourselves, although that's that, that's also quite nice. But actually, what we want to do is uh, to um, to basically uh, to basically extract this documentation from our uh, from our uh, project itself. So basically, just to remind you, so we will, uh, I will just close uh, this uh, test.rst because that's handwritten, and you would like to include the documentation. So basically, after this test.rst, I would like to have an API.rst, 
which should be the file which contains the API documentation. So that basically the documentation of my module and the functions in my module. And then of course I have to create this API.rst file. Uh, API.rst, I just create it. And now the question is, of course, here I could write all the things which are in solvers. So I could try get the temptation to try to copy paste things and put it in. But that would be, of course, a nightmare because it's very complicated to do. It's uh, incredibly complicated to keep it up to date and while doing something which Python can do it on its own. And in order to do so, we have to do we have to tell uh, Sphinx that it should automatically extract the documentation from a given module. And if you look up here, I just wrote it into the slides. I, I cannot remember myself, to be honest. Uh, how you can do that and here the way you do that you are just using the auto module feature uh, you are using auto module and then you are telling uh, Sphinx which module you want to have here and then uh, uh, in that module which things you want to have documented members means basically all the members please document all the members so basically this is what we would have to uh, we would have to do so I will just here copy paste basically in this API stuff uh, so let's go to api.rst and I will just uh, here enter that. The only thing one has to be careful that everything, of course, I mean, being uh, Python, this is uh, indentation dependent. And here the uh, correct indentation would be uh, here to do it uh, basically below auto module, I think. Well, let's have a quick look at that. Yes, I was just putting it in line with the A of uh, auto module. I also would like to give it a title so that basically this chapter has also a title. And uh, now I will just look up how I did it in, in test.rst um, just to make sure. Okay, I was choosing this notation to uh, mark chapters. So I will just uh, here, I will just make the same API uh, documentation. I will call it and I'm using just the same way of uh, marking it, something like this. And then I am telling Python to find the solvers modules and basically from the solvers modules uh, module uh, extract all the information, all the members uh, which have a documentation. Now the big question is who can Python find this solver module, solvers module? Who, who does it know when uh, I'm uh, building the documentation for, uh, for Sphinx? Who does it know where to look, it, uh, look at uh, for this module? And that I can configure in conf.p and here I have basically to modify these three lines that I was describing the slides. I have to uh, import the OS module, the sys module. I mean, this is just pure Python file, so I can do whatever it's possible in Python. And I have to add to the sys.path. The sys.path is basically the, the path where Python looks for modules. And I have to add to this thing uh, the a directory dot dot which means a directory which is above the documentation directory and if you remember if you look up here we have here the doc directory docs directory but basically all python files are one level higher up in the in the directory above that and therefore i have to write dot dot here so basically this line doesn't do anything else just make sure that when python is looking for modules which should be imported then it looks also in the directory which is above the documentation directory okay and this is exactly where all service.py file is indeed located Okay, and then let's look the API. We have created the API index.rst. We are including the API file. So basically now we can go back to this folder and try to make, let's say the HTML documentation again. And uh, at least there was no error message so far. So maybe it, it was successful. I can have a look. Uh, if I just go back to the index.html file here uh, as before, because that should be the entry point index.html then you see that here I have a new chapter which is called API documentation and uh, the test chapter is still the same nothing changed but if I go to the API documentation then you see that I have exactly the documentation which I had in the code but in a very nice uh, marked form in HTML right so basically if you look here uh, in the lin solver uh, in the solvers.py then you see that this is exactly uh, the code which is here but of course uh, converted to HTML and uh, rendered in a way which is quite appealing. Okay, good. 
And of course, the nice thing is if you now change the documentation in the project, this documentation, if you rebuild it, will be automatically uh, updated. So basically, the documentation here is always in synchronous or is synchronous with the documentation in your files. We can just demonstrate that because actually this documentation is not that nice because here I only see uh, servers gaussian.eliminate. However, the exception, which I'm also using outside of the class because uh, this is something which, which I may need able to treat outside, this is not documented at all. So basically what I will do, I will document also the class and similar to uh, classes are very similar to everything else, which means the first string immediately after the definition is a doc string. And I will uh, just uh, write this a class which signalizes uh, errors during linear algebra operations and uh, linear dependency. Or no, I will just leave away. Let's say that that's enough, just to characterize it. No, I have uh, I have given it. Uh, but let's call the. Actually, I don't need three quotes here. One is enough because I'm not going beyond one line. Or if I wanted to do it free, then it should be this way, right? And uh, basically, no, I have uh, made the documentation for that. And then let's uh, basically just run make HTML in the lin server docs folder. And then if you look at the API documentation, I'm just reloading with uh, control R, then you see that suddenly, okay, the exception solvers.linux error appears here as well. So basically I made uh, here a documentation for that. And then it appeared. Actually, it's also quite custom. Uh, if you des describe the documentation of a routine to describe what kind of uh, exceptions it can raise. Uh, so that should be actually also uh, documented. And uh, let's do that. So we are just changing back to the lens solver. And here, after the returns, if you look at the Google style guide, the usual way of doing things is just to write exceptions uh, or uh, sorry, it's uh, raises, uh, so returns or raises. So which kind of exception can be raised? And then we are saying, OK, lin arg error. And this lin arg error uh, should be if uh, system is linearly dependent okay so basically i am just adding that to the documentation and then let's see what happens if i am just uh, rebuilding the documentation uh, then you will see that uh, here if i'm just reloading with uh, control r you see that here the raises uh, uh, um, here a field appears and it has a lin arg error and actually the nice thing is if i click on that it jumps immediately here so basically it also automatically interconnects here the entries and that that's very very nice and also if you have entries between different modules they can be uh, if you configure swings correctly uh, they can be indeed uh, interconnected so that's a very very handy option uh, or problem feature of uh, swings you can use Actually, if you look at uh, if you are talking about what is documented and what is not documented, if you look at the, this module, actually this module has also a constant tolerance uh, and it has also a routine uh, make partial pivot and they are not appearing in this documentation here. And the reason for that is because they are starting with a dash uh, with an underscore, sorry, with an underscore here and also underscore here and underscore typically in Python means that uh, you are telling the people you are not supposed to use to call or use those entries from the outside. They are basically internal details uh, for this routine and therefore also they are not included into the documentation. If I had uh, if I would remove uh, this underscore here, for example, so it would just uh, call make partial pivot, which is uh, something which handles the partial pivoting and I would just generate the documentation and then uh, if I would just reload it, then it would appear as well. However, this is a routine, which is just a helper routine for the routines in, uh, for, for, for this uh, Gaussian elimination routines, routine here. So basically there is no reason why it should be uh, uh, visible from outside. And especially maybe I will change it later. And uh, basically uh, then if people use that, they would have to change their code as well, especially if I'm changing here the signature. So basically the parameters which I'm passing. So basically, you should make sure that you are ma making only uh, routines public, which you really mean uh, to make public, which people are supposed to do. And the internal details, how you do that, you should hide as much as possible. Still, you should you should use functions uh, so that uh, all your functions are short, 
possibly not uh, longer than 50 lines that would be very nice um, uh, but uh, just uh, those helper functions you can just mark or helper constants you can just mark by making an underscore in front of them and then uh, although in theory you can use that from outside so it's not a really hiding it but this is basically a com um, basically a convention in Python whatever uh, starts with an underscore you are not supposed to use from outside Okay, so and basically I just added the underscore again, and then if I rebuild the documentation, then you will see that uh, this documentation accordingly it's updated. So if I'm just reloading it, it vanished again, and it contains exactly the information which I need. Okay, good. And uh, this is basically everything uh, which I wanted to tell you. We have also shown a uh, scene that uh, with LaTeX PDF, you can make a PDF document. Of course, also the API documentation will be uh, included in this PDF document. So we just say make LaTeX PDF. And then if I do that and uh, I'm just uh, loading uh, with Evans uh, the build uh, LaTeX Linsava documentation.pdf folder. Uh, um, this is not so interesting but then you see that here you have the api documentation and again it's in a nice uh, nice form uh, actually one thing maybe i i uh, wanted to just uh, sh one more thing i wanted to show you let's just let me close this window where the button is here so um yeah exactly um and uh, one thing sometimes you do in the documentation is to indicate the five types which you are expecting right so in python there is no type checking when you pass arguments but if you want to have uh, uh, some hints to the users who are using it what kind of entries what a should be you can just write it uh, in uh, parentheses and you can say a it should be let's say a float array and b should be also a float array of type and then usually you write it basically here in a kind of uh, parenthesis and if you are uh, rerunning the documentation but let's just make the, the html documentation because it's faster uh, and then you are looking at the api documentation that you see that basically this information was added here as well so it appears that ah okay a is supposed to be a float array and so on and so on so that you can also do okay and with that, we are basically finished. Know that you are creating the documentation and you have the documentation, you should add it uh, to, the, to your Git uh, repository. And uh, if you're asking what is in, in that directory, interesting, then of course, there are some new fi some files, make files, API, conf, index, and make. And uh, they are here considered as modified because I have added them uh, to, the, uh, to the project already before and uh, this test.rst is not there but the important point which i wanted to, to emphasize here is that for example the build directory is not something you want to add to your files why because the build contains only the result of the compilation of the generation of the document and everybody can do it, it uh, himself it's not not part of the source code everybody who has things can do it on his own so basically this is a typically a folder which you would not add uh, to the to your git repository but in order not to have it popping it up in this, uh, if you make a git status, uh, then of course you should add it to the git the dot git ignore file in the root of your project. And you see, I was uh, a part of the spider project and PyCache. I was also adding docs slash uh, underscore build to the git ignore so that, that whatever is in that folder is completely ignored. And then basically you, you should add it by hand or all, all, all those things here. And we can say git add test.rst if you also want to add test.rst and then we can make a git commit, right? And basically the changes which we have made is just adding automatic documentation. And then you could just basically check in and commit. Good. With that, basically, uh, I, that's everything I wanted to tell you about uh, Sphinx and uh, the restructured text and automatic documentation. Of course, the restructuring text format is by far more powerful than what I have shown here. I have just scratched the surface. 
if you want to have a look here I have some links uh, uh, which you can uh, which you can look up or whatever resources you find in the internet and then you see what kind of constraints you can do uh, this restructured text you can also uh, format you can and Sphinx you can also use to write the user documentation not just the API documentation which is a documentation for the developer but you can also write the user manual in the same folder and uh, using the same documentation format. So that's uh, something which I can't really recommend because it looks also quite nice and it's very nice to read. Good. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope that uh, now you were uh, basically uh, in the position of uh, creating such kind of documentation. And if you do the exercises, you can exercise it one, uh, more, uh, once uh, more. And you should learn that because every project which you want to put uh, in the public should be well documented, otherwise other people can not use it. Thanks a lot for your attention. Take care and uh, hopefully see you, see you at the next session. Bye bye.